English as an International Language, or EIL, is descriptive. Scholars characterize EIL as a description of how it functions today throughout the world, not as a prescription for how English should be used. Approving the learner's equal right to take advantage of this international tool, it directly deals with how people use English to maintain their relationships. As a result, the arising of different varieties of English is naturally expected. EIL is reformative. EIL can be justified as a natural reaction to the drawbacks of the previous approaches. The initial impetus for this approach is found in realizing the inadequacies of EFL and ESL models. It is therefore a new achievement evolved as a result of the growing similarities between EFL and ESL programs. Interactors in EIL are unpredictable. For EFL and ESL, the interactors are predictable. EIL, however, is characterized distinct in terms of its interactors. In an EFL situation, one interactor is always a native speaker. In ESL situations, the interactors may be non-native speakers communicating with native speakers, or the interaction may be between two local non-native speakers using English internationally. However, in EIL, the interactors can be nationals of different countries. EIL is intervarietal. As there are many varieties of English, EIL is an intervarietal way of communication. From an EIL perspective, no speaker is realized as extreme. They are all users of English, no matter whether he or she is a Bangladesh teacher, Egyptian tour guide, or an Alabama tourist. EIL is functional. EIL refers to the functions of English, not to the given form of the language. Therefore, it is concerned with the use of English by people of different nations and different cultures in order to communicate with one another. EIL is non-artificial. EIL has no native speakers. It, differs, it differs from Esperanto in a sense that the latter is artificial. In fact, English is an exceptional natural language able to obtain international appreciation. EIL is cross-cultural. Students must somehow be prepared to operate with English in unknown situations, which are characterized by variations in linguistic and cultural behavior. Diversity in the learner's cultural background and the forms of English around the world is a fact. EIL is multicultural. The unpredictability of the English speakers previously discussed on the one hand and their divergent range of cultural backgrounds on the other portrays a multicultural perspective for English in international conditions. EIL is universal. English is the language most frequently used in international trade, diplomacy, and tourism in that it is studied by more people than any other language. This seems to be an appropriate edge to argue that English in international settings does not belong to any one group of people. In fact, people from different nations all around the world may adopt this key for a variety of reasons. Under these conditions, a process of mutual adjustment amongst interactors may automatically be activated for overcoming misunderstandings. EIL is intercultural. The use of English and any other language is always culture bound, but the language itself is not bound to any specific culture or political system. In EFL and ESL, specific varieties of English and specific cultures can be dealt with. This may not be considered valid for EIL. Both native and non-native speakers need training in EIL. Many scholars demonstrate that native speakers have serious problems in understanding English spoken internationally. It thus recommends that native speakers of English need training in the use of their own language in international settings. Non-native speakers of English also need training in the use of English, not just with native speakers, but with non-native speakers as well. In short, moving in the direction of EIL, we must rethink several assumptions. As a globally spread language, English should no longer be considered as a property of its native speakers. It has already grown into a world property. Likewise, language learners might not be considered as mere consumers of this Anglo-Saxon tradition. With no attempt to de-emphasize the national practice of English for English-speaking countries, the international function of English is thought to be a different aspect, which deserves particular attention. The existence of different varieties of English warns us against the danger of limiting the scope of practice and learning to certain limited varieties. As far as culture is concerned, due to the diversity among native speakers on one hand, and the heterogeneous population of non-native speakers on the other, 
the culture of native speakers can no longer be imposed. In contrast to the idea of language hegemony or linguistic chauvinism, non-native speakers of English may use it to express, react, or even propagate their ideas to affect a relatively larger part of the world, including native speakers. The increasing trend of globalization may indirectly make us take immediate measures to live up to the demands of the oncoming era, one of whose basic demands is the ability and readiness to communicate and understand via an international language. Thus it seems urgent that individuals in all parts of the world be adequately equipped with this effective tool as soon and as much as possible.